Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought that we would do a Pat McGrath video. Looks using the motherships, but we're only gonna focus on the mats. And I wanna talk a little bit about this new collection that's coming out today actually. So during the video, let me know what you're picking up from the new collection. I'm gonna tell you what I'm picking up and yeah, let's just have a conversation. All right, so what I did is I looked at the palette that I was the most interested in, which is the six pan with all mats. And I started looking at my motherships and I'm like, Ugh. This is the one thing that I'm most annoyed with when I see her palettes and the one that I'm most interested in now. But basically it's a six pan all matte palette. So I'll put together a matte look today using some of the shades that I feel are in that one. And let's talk. I'll list below what motherships I used so that you know what I used for the look. So here we go again. And it's one of those things where Pat McGrath is actually one of my favorite brands, you guys. And I don't... This is why I feel the need to talk about it again is because I feel like I've always been the one that like runs and buys the motherships and does the reviews, does the lit swatches, tells you how beautiful they are. And now I think with everything we've seen since October until now is why I feel like so duped by the brand, not by Pat McGrath, by the brand. Now we talked about this in the last video where uh, Kendo is actually the brand that owns Pat McGrath and she had like some some comments on one of the IG lives that she does when she's releasing the new the new collections and she talked about how she had so many other ideas for um, the creative direction of the brand but that you know essentially they weren't really approved by leadership at the brand and so in a way it just kind of brings the human element to everything that we've seen going on it's just like it's sad you guys like i can't imagine like you trying to like quiet down an artist you know especially when this brand has her name on it now i'm going to tell you that the the out of the collection what i'm most interested in is going to be the six pan all matte palette as well as some of the liquid shadows. I'm a little concerned about both of those. Not concerned, but I'm a little iffy as to whether I will pick them up or not. I lowered my chair a little bit because, first of all, her mats are really, really good. I've always said that, you know, like my little tagline is always like, you take a Sonia G brush, you take a Pat McGrath mat, and you just kind of sit back and let them blend each other out because that's how good they are. And I do think that they're good, but I will tell you that in like the last two motherships, I would say like maybe like Utopian Dream and uh, Moonlit Seduction, um, maybe in some of the others as well, now that I think about it, is sometimes the mats, the mats are always good, okay, always, but they're not always incredible, okay? And again, this is not to, you know, talk down on the brand at all because the brand is magic. I just did a short with the divine droid from Star Wars that somebody sent me. The, the, the formula is magic. So they're always really good, but they're not always incredible, incredible. Okay. So just a tad bit of inconsistency, not too much, but just a tad bit. So why would I buy a six pound of all mats when I already have all the neutral brownie mats I could want from the brand? They're in every single mothership, except for Decadence, which is, I think, Mothership 4, the All Shimmer palette. But every other palette has the same thing, a brownie nude, a light brown, and there's a couple that have a black, but aside from that, every other mothership has a matte brown of some sort. That's looking so pretty. Look at that. Ooh, that looks so pretty. But again, I already have these palettes. Um, so the other part of the collection that I'm kind of interested in is the liquid shadows. And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, I don't really use liquid shadows. Like I bought like the three trio chrome from Natasha Denona back in the day. I have so many of these Stila shadows and I don't really use them at all. And recently, last year, I found out that I might be allergic to some of the ingredients in a formula like that. Like the Danessa Myrick skin lights, you know, the little tubes she has just completely made me break out like crazy. And then I went back to try a Stila one and it did the same thing. I tried a Sydney Grace and then it kind of got irritated. It didn't blow up my eye like the Danessa Myricks did, but then that's what makes me like a little 
iffy about ordering them. Like, should I order those? I don't know. The lipsticks look like a repromo, you know, from the Bridgerton collections. And then the liquid matte lipsticks are a little too dry for my liking. It looks, is there any glosses? I don't see any glosses. And then I see the under eye powder, which is great. You know, that's a holy grail for me. Um, but not enough to like buy it for the new packaging, right? So that kind of just leaves me with the all with the six pan palettes. The other two palettes don't even interest me a single bit. I have all those shades over and over, but then I started thinking like, I think I have the mattes over and over. The only matte that I don't have is the very lightest shade in the palette. Um, but like, I used to buy that light bone colored shade from Maybelline, like the single eyeshadows over and over before I started my collection. So that's not like a must have. So I don't know. I'm just interested in like what your thoughts are. I just don't understand. As much as I don't understand the direction of the brand, it's selling. It's not selling out, but it is selling and it is appealing to the mass market, you know? And so I, I understand that, but I'm just interested. Like, what are your thoughts? What are you picking up? What do you think about the new collection? Do you think it's another attempt to just kind of get us for our money? I mean, I feel like, um, I had somebody send me a DM and say that there's been some, some shades that appear to be like bronzer shade names that Pat McGrath, kind of secured a couple of years ago now. And it's like, if you want to get people excited about your brand again, how about you do something that you haven't done? Like, I know that for a long time, people wanted blush, 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 blush. And when the blushes were released, everybody went crazy. I mean, I bought the entire freaking collection. I bought the lipsticks that went with it. I bought all the blushes. I bought the little quad. I bought everything. It got me excited about our brand again. So it's like, why don't you do something you haven't done before um, that people have been asking for? That might get people really, really excited about you again. And maybe some of this atten this negative attention to go away. Um, but yeah, like those are my thoughts. I also, since I don't have the matte light shade, I'll just go in with one of the light shimmers. They're in every palette as well. <laughs> Oh no, I just killed the look. Ugh, can I wipe it off? I just killed the look. I really loved the look that I had going. I want to keep it all matte. That sucks. I think I killed it. Now, another reason why I don't know if I'm shopping this collection, went in with my Peter Thomas Roth Instant Firm X No Filter Primer. If you guys haven't seen my short on this, it's kind of incredible. Uh, go check it out because this primer is kind of great. But do you guys remember the Balenciaga drama with um, the kids and that marketing campaign that went out that pissed everybody off because there was some inappropriate props and stuff with kids in the pictures? All right, the only thing with this primer is you have to let it sit three to seven minutes, but if you guys remember that drama with Valenciaga, what people were really upset about was the inappropriate use of props with those marketing campaigns that included children. Well, when I was going down that rabbit hole and was researching that whole debacle or whatever, um, one of the things that came up was how like luxury brands, but specifically Val Valenciaga, um, was recently had had a lot of like runway shows and things like that that focused on like like on the dark energy or dark woman energy or whatever and you see these runway shows and these like really odd looking fashion shows where models are modeling the n newest launches or couture for next season and they're kind of stomping down the runway and they're in this really dark, deep makeup. They look dirty even. I mean, one of the Balenciaga shows was done like at a, I don't even know if it was like a dumpster area or something crazy, like an old warehouse, but it was made to look like the models were strolling down this runway of like mud or tar or whatever. It's like this really dark energy vibe. Well, I noticed on Pat McGrath's Instagram page that she, it, it shows the makeup on models and stuff, but the models kind of have the same vibe, like a dark energy vibe. And I saw it and I was like, 
I don't like how that feels. You know, it's almost like a demonic type of look to me. And I'm not trying to get spiritual in this video at all, but it just felt off. Like, it's like, is this the way that luxury beauty or fashion is going into this dark energy, for instance? And to see that reflected on Pat McGrath's Instagram, I just like, I didn't feel like it really felt good with me. And so that was another thing that I saw. And I was like, oh, maybe I'm not so interested in the six pen all matte palette. And it's just not my vibe. And then when you get a bunch of repeats or ju of just neutral mattes, it kind of makes you think, you know, I'm going to use my Pat McGrath Bridgerton highlight. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever used this. Look at how pretty it is, the embossing on it. I don't know if I've ever used it. Pretty. It's really pretty. The 90s call, they want their makeup look back. <laughs> this looks so much like, you know, like the all matte, like, supermodel look that they used to have, which is exactly what Pat McGrath is trying to channel with this new launch. So I guess I'll end it here. You guys, in the beauty space as a YouTuber, you are going to be able to monetize or make money by talking about all the new product, leaving the links down below so that people can shop through the links. You make money, you know, a little tiny bit of money posting your video, things like that. But I just feel like when I see launches like this, collections like this, there's always going to be a customer for the collection. Maybe somebody that's never tried Pat McGrath, which if you haven't tried Pat McGrath and you're thinking about it, I encourage you to. It's beautiful, beautiful quality. But for people that are makeup enthusiasts that have had, that have been fans of Pat McGrath for quite a while, this is not something that's really going to add a ton of value to our collection. And so anyway, that's why I thought that I would put this video together to talk about it with you, but then also to kind of convince myself, like, I don't need any of this stuff. If I picked any of it up, it would be one or two of the liquid shadows, which I may or may not do. I'm filming this previous to the launch, which is on Friday the 27th, but um, I'm just not sure. I think that there's other things that are more exciting that are coming up that I might be interested in picking up and using my money towards that. So anyway, just something to think about so that on launch day, we don't lose our head or whatever. But let me know what your thoughts are down below. Again, I want to reiterate, like Pat McGrath is kind of the goat. She is the queen and the mother of eyeshadow, especially in the luxury space. I truly believe that. I have a ton of her products, but we have to be just a little bit more watchful of these repeats, you know, um, making sure that we're not adding a ton of stuff just because it's new and exciting, but because it actually brings something different to our collection. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of this look, all with Mothership palettes that I already have. I did use a shade from the Bridgerton, the Diamond of the First Water. So I did use one of the mattes in here, but it, nothing too crazy or different that we don't already have in the Mothership. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful. I will actually see you, when are you gonna see this video? If you see this Thursday, I'll see you tomorrow for the Makeup and Chill. We have a brand coming on. But if you see it Friday morning, then I'll see you tonight. All right, guys, love you. See you later. Bye.